I was about to turn my mic on and it already is, so that's perfect. All right, so um, we have uh, a good question actually. One of the things I was looking at is the G4 storm we had, and then seeing it um, drop down to a G1, and I looked into it and trying to find out what we missed because I didn't see anything either of that nature. Uh, I saw multiple storms, solar storms, but I didn't see anything that was signif uh, significant to uh, be such an event. But I did make a video of what sent the storm, which was on the 25th, and uh, I'll pull it up here in a moment. Let me, uh, here we go. We're going to put our sun away for now and turn this on. There we go. And here's the actual storm. It's launched right here, right there. That's the one. And there are two reasons why this was not forecasted. And the more obvious of reason is the fact that it is head on. And one of the ways that I uh, like Dr. Scobb describes it is when you have a solar storm that's heading towards the Earth and you don't have a side on view of it it's like looking at a semi truck heading towards you and you can see the headlights but you can't tell how big the trailer is or how big the truck is or even if there's a trailer uh, coming your direction because all you see is well there was a, a headlights so the Sun obscures that plasma that was uh, coming from the imagery and what that uh, leads us with, especially since it was cooler plasma and this was not caused by a hot event, it was more of a, um, an eruption than a, um, <laughs> an explosive eruption. It's more of like a, a semi-gentle eruption, as it were, from the looks of it, which is also why the solar winds never accelerated much. And the reason it was a short-lasting uh, G4, uh, based on the analysis I did, is because the event was was rather condensed the event had a lot a high amount of density there wasn't a lot of expansion diameter wise so it came outward and some of these ICMEs expand in the upwards of 31, 000, uh, 31 million miles in diameter this one did not expand much in that that facet while it did become non-collisional plasma during its transversing 90, 93 million miles from the sun to the earth it did not expand uh uh, greatly from that point. So what we ended up having is essentially what uh, Dr. Scov would call a stealth ICME or stealth solar storm. And you can see the storm happens. You can see the dimming region and everything of the sort here. But what you can't see is the extent of the amount of plasma that is launched from this event due to the limited scope we have in viewing these events. And the other reason why is because the data itself was difficult to understand how we got a G4 when you look at the ACE and DISCOVER information that came when that storm passed those satellites. Now those, that storm, as it reaches ACE and uh, SOHO, they're approximately one million miles away from Earth towards the Sun. That gives them, us about a one hour time to show the difference of when a storm is going to be impacting them too when it impacts us here on earth and we didn't see any significant data there that showed anything that we expected a severe storm a uh, geomagnetic solar storm but on the contrary this uh, storm apparently had a a dense amount of uh, plasma it was cooler plasma and even though it was moving slower taking a prolonged amount of time to get here it, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was completely unforecasted and unexpected. And this just shows you the importance of stereo head and used to be stereo behind as well, giving us that side on view where we can look at the sun from more than just one direct angle and get a good view, especially that side on, where we would have been able to see that and be able to predict it and understand it and be prepared for it. And not just uh not just me not just noah you know it, it would have been everywhere uh much more obvious much more easy to declare and state and prepare for but as such uh these things due to our limited scope and due to 
the nature of the event, we did not get a, a good prediction on this one at all. And it just shows that we need a better observation point or scope of observation for the sun so we can see what's happening more than just looking directly at it. Now, yeah, from perspective of Earth. So as stereo ahead is orbiting the sun a little faster than Earth is, uh, we're going to see that we start getting a side on view again, which is going to be very nice. And it will give us a view of these events happening that we would otherwise miss when looking at SOHO, the new GOES-19, as soon as it's designated in about another two weeks, and uh, as well as, um, oh, what was the other one? <laughs> <laughs> I forget the name of it, but uh, one of ESA satellites, I believe. But uh, yeah, so we have multiple facets from one view, and that limits our ability to be able to see more than just the headlights are coming our way. And many times we even don't get to see that clearly due to the fact the sun is so much more hot <laughs> and so much more brighter on that imagery that we don't see those details. So hopefully that answers it. Probably should upload that too, just to make sure that if anyone uh, is curious, because that's a really good question. That is something I asked myself, and that's why I pulled the imagery from 193 SDO and made a video out of it, because I wanted to see what happened, what we missed, and if there's anything we could have done differently to be able to predict it. And honestly, no. I, I cannot see any way we could have known forehand that this was happening based on uh, what the data we had. We could see a solar storm launching, but it does not look as extensive as the G4 that we had received due to those reasons. But that's that. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. And, well, I'm here if you have any questions. <laughs> Cheers and science on.